Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry, where after the introduction to the Spanish cruiser line upcoming tech tree thing, uh, we are now at tier 9 with the Andalusia. Andalusia? I, I think it is. Uh, pardon me if I get that wrong. <laughs> I probably will a couple of times. So, uh, tier 9, where things are a little different. Uh, this ship didn't didn't exist and uh, apparently according to Wargaming there was a Project 138 design but this doesn't match uh, this doesn't match very much uh, very much of the actual stats that we see in game because the guns didn't quite match uh, the three options that I found were actually available for the planned Project 138 cruiser this was supposed to be a treaty cruiser but um, it looks significantly larger now. In fact, if you look at the superstructure, it looks positively British, doesn't it? Well then, um, this is the tier 9. Let's take a look and see how she compares to the tier 7. There we go. Uh, first things we notice is that we get better of everything. We get better sonar, we get better defensive AA, and we get a better scout plane, just for reference. At tier 7 we had 12% range increase, at tier 9 we get 16 and it lasts longer as well. Of course we do have the, uh, we do have the uh, salvo fire mechanic, I've explained it in the last video so I'm not going to go into too many details anymore, but basically it means uh, you can fire two salvos in rapid succession, but the price you pay is a longer reload than if you had fired two salvos individually, so it's very situational. Uh, obviously, from jumping from tier 7 to tier 9, we're in a significantly larger ship. So we do have a decent amount of hit points and a slightly improved armor. Still a very, very fast ship, though, with comparable maneuverability. And the guns are bigger. These are 234mm guns, which have a better range. And uh, while they don't do an awful lot of more damage on the armor piercing, the high explosive has been improved. In return, the turret traverse speed is rapidly approaching battleship <laughs> dimensions. <laughs> the torpedoes, honestly, are a little bit of a letdown almost, I would say. Yes, they do a bit more damage, but they take uh, quite a bit longer to reload, and uh, they do have a 10 kilometer range, which is good, but uh, other than that, they're pretty much the same torpedoes that you have at tier seven. Now, the AA has been improved, but uh, still uh, is r relatively poor for a tier nine ship even with the defensive AA. And the concealment is worse with nine and a half kilometers because it's a big ship. Now the eagle-eyed among you have, will have noticed that I have the Drake here in the comparison. And uh, I, I've lost track on uh, Sly 47's worst ship tour tournament, <laughs> but if uh, experience tells anything, the Drake should be somewhere in there because it's a, it, it is a ship that is very much disliked <laughs> generally. So let's, uh, why are we comparing her to the Drake then? Well, uh, let's look at the guns, shall we? The Drake has 234 uh, 50 caliber length Mark 12 guns in triple turrets. The Andalusia has 234 millimeter 50 caliber length Mark 12 guns in three triple turrets. Yep, these are the Drake's guns. <laughs> With a worse high explosive shell. <laughs> But at least it gets a 1.5 second faster base reload. And uh, yes, they have managed to even undercut the Drake's turret traverse. <laughs> so, uh, woohoo, then. Okay, well then, uh, we are in a large cruiser. I mean, if we go, the Asturias was already pretty big. This thing looks even chunkier. And uh, what can we do with it? Well, we do have... Uh, my, <laughs> okay, we do have a useless and a um, kind of meh uh, elite bonus. So you can either either try to buff the, the armor, but given that it's a cruiser and it does not have the greatest armor to begin with, there isn't much to buff. Or you could buff the turret traverse, which given that it has positively battleship turret traverse isn't great either, but it's still the, it's, it, it's the least bad of two choices, let's put it that way. Uh, once again, you have the choice between the absolutely glaringly obviously Spanish. <laughs> I mean, they couldn't—they couldn't have made it more Spanish if they had put some 
if they <laughs> if they had put some horns onto the thing and a paella on top. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, we've got the historical camo, which gives us main battery firing range, useless torpedo damage reduction, useless range on the large caliber AA, and max traverse speed, which is kind of nice to have, but uh, not a massive thing. Or you get the wonky wavy water dragon camo, which at least gives, gives us dispersion, but uh, other than that gives us relatively useless AA range on this ship. So exactly the same story that we had in the previous ones. Uh, equipment wise, we, can we now have access to the dispersion modifications, so I am taking that, even though I ardently refuse to sail with that water dragon camo. I am also obviously sailing with a propulsion mod in slot 2 because honestly there's not an awful lot else that you can put in slot 2. The, the, the rest is pretty much useless here for most use cases. And uh, we have the concealment system despite the ship having a worse base concealment but this is tier 9. We're no longer in tier 7. We get into tier, same, tier 10 games. Tier 10 games have things like Yamatos and Vermonts. <laughs> And these things love nothing better than lobbing shells at cruisers from half across the map that uh, can take two-thirds of your health off in a very, very rapid and for the Yamato of Vermont in question, very satisfying sequence of events. So concealment it is. Uh, the commander skills are exactly the same setup and I have remembered to put the uh, premium consumables in this time. So again, we're playing two, we're playing two games. Uh, I am still running with the support cruiser setup, but like I said in the last review, you'd be totally valid, uh, validated to just take torpedo alert instead and uh, exploit weakness to try and do a little bit more damage. And uh, other than that, yep, we've got the APCS for the second game and I'm still running the horizontal protection expert for whatever little good it does, plus uh, the obvious damage over time reduction build. Now, um, again, if we are comparing, and, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to have to point that out here. Uh, this is tier 7 to tier 9. The guns in tier 9 do a little bit more damage on the AP, but have a two second longer base reload. Yes, we get an extra gun, but it's two tiers up. This is sort of the, this is the sort of bump I would have tolerated for tier 8, but for tier 9, ah... That is, and we've got an 11.9 kilometer base range in tier 9 on 234 millimeter guns with no smoke screens <laughs> and a large cruiser. Whew, that's a tall order. Well, um, as you probably can already hear from uh, the inflection of my voice and uh, the uh, marginal, subtle introduction of sarcasm into the introduction of this ship, <laughs> uh, this is not a very good ship. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> this is. <laughs> This is a disgustingly terrible ship. There, if you don't want to see it, it's fine. You can quit right here. Say just, no, tier 9, no. <laughs> this ship is literally one of the worst experiences I've had in a long time. Uh, this, this thoroughly rivals the British heavy cruisers. <laughs> Imagine you have to play a British heavy cruiser, but you don't get single fire torps and you get no smoke. <laughs> and you get worse high explosive shells. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Okay, so yeah, this is... Uh, no, this was not fun to play, very much, uh, to the point that uh, the games I'm about to show you... Um, look, I generally play a fair amount of games, and I try to pick a couple where uh, mostly I'm trying to show what the ship can do, and um, that's where I pick out two of them. But I didn't... I honestly didn't have any battles where the ship shows what it can do, and that is because the ship really can't do an awful lot. <laughs> So, most of this is going to be to show you what the ship really can't do. And that's what, uh, that's what we're about to see. So, uh, without further ado, let's get into the dreariness that is Tier 9 on the Spanish Tech Tree. So this is Tier 9. So obviously, uh, we are going to get into a Tier 10 game. We are facing Yamato, Musashi, Izumo, Freddy, Wooster, Colbert and Hindenburg on uh, Hourglass, on Base Capture. And no destroyers in this game. No destroyers, no carriers, just battleships and cruisers. Well, uh, the Petra Pavlovsk is probably... I mean, I'm, I'm going to be honest here. I'd probably rather play the Petra than this thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> that should tell you a little bit. Anyway, Hourglass. Uh, we're probably gonna, not going to venture very far. 
Unfortunately, I am spawning in the middle, so generally, um, I, I would prefer to be on on the uh, on the flank somewhat. But um, well, I don't know. I don't like abandoning the ships in the middle too much. What do we have over there? Petro. Yeah, nobody seems to be wanting to go around the outside, which is honestly the better option, really. So I'm just going to hang around in the center here, uh, try to use the islands for some cover and try to give as little um, firepower support that I can. Well, at least the torpedo angles aren't terrible and the torpedo range is pretty good. So if you can get some torpedoes on target, at least things sort of work out OK. Well, let's see what we can do from over here. We do have the scout plane that can give us a bit of extra range. Unfortunately, there is no captain skill to actually improve the amount of scout planes that you can carry. So uh, this is about as far forward as I want to go. And we have spotted ourselves a Colbert. Well, not we, it's the Ibuki over there who's got significantly better concealment than I do. And um, now let's get the scout plane up. And we are at the edge of the range of the scout plane. Can I get some shots out there? Well, I can, I'm gonna try to solve us out. But the problem is the range just wasn't enough to catch the Colbert other than uh, Get a couple good shots in and shoot his his rudder off. So there goes his damage con. But uh, yeah, I, I I can't with the I can't even with the scout plane up. I just can't reach the Colbert. So instead we're gonna get well we're gonna get some shots out at the Freddy. The problem is the re ow and yeah you see that have you seen that? <laughs> I was full health a second ago. I don't even know who was that. It was probably the Yamato. Uh, that was two thirds of my health gone. Just like that. Poof. <laughs> we haven't even... We have, we're not even two minutes into the game and um, I am at the edge of my range here. And uh, I am even unspotted at this point, which is my my, my only saving grace. Uh, the guns don't really do anything at this range. We have lost the Ibuki, the friendly Ibuki. And yeah, that's... Um, that, that's what... Uh, that's what battleships do to you. In this thing, uh, Freddy, Freddy's damaged. I would love to shoot at the Freddy, but I can't reach him with under twelve. This this feels like the Rauden Liu, <laughs> without the scalp planes, uh, without the the uh, well, how do you call it? Anyway, uh, we're unspotted, so I'm gonna get two salvos off on that fully broadsiding Worcester ten kilometer and see if, we, if these two hundred thirty four millimeter armor piercing shells can do anything. And the answer is not really. <laughs> Shot a gun off the Worcester, that was about it. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to wait for the next heal to come on of cooldown to see if I can actually manage to contribute anything to the battle. I still have a broadsiding Worcester to shoot at, but at this point, because I have just used the... Um, I have just used the... Uh, the rapid fire skill, I have to wait an extortionate amount of time for that to come back on again. Now, don't get me wrong, against light cruisers, and you've just seen that, right? Semi pens and a bounce of a Wooster at 10 kilometers. Uh, against proper light cruisers, like really squishy light cruisers, like that Colbert over there, um, the I would be able to do something. Against the Wooster, I'm doing about as much damage as I would probably do in an Edinburgh. Yeah, with 234 millimeter guns. Uh, I might have to fire high explosive. I've, look, I've just bounced a 234 millimeter armor piercing shell of a Colbert. The armor of the Colbert is so bad that if you were, that you would actually have to add armor to the Colbert in order for it to have no armor. <laughs> that, that, my friends, is how terrible these shells are. Uh, yeah, so no, you, you're not doing any damage with this uh, unless you get into point-blank range or you are shooting at extremely light cruisers <laughs> Like a Colbert <laughs> Maybe maybe, maybe you're, you're able to do full penetrations on destroyers with these <laughs> we'll have to I can't find out unfortunately because we have no destroyers in this game, but um, Enemy team is now pushing So I'm gonna get a blind shot out at the Colbert, but uh, uh, Oh look, I've landed a Citadel on a Colbert <laughs> Oh, wow. look at that uh, but yeah, now the um, Colbert is out of range again, and I do have to make myself scarce because, well, that's a Musashi, and I am giving broadside to that yeah. Izumo over there, which is very unhealthy. So turn, turn, net. nope, never mind. <laughs> that's an Izumo, by the way, right? That's a, a tier 9 with, uh, with the 16 inch guns. And they just shave off most of my hit points again. <laughs> so let's drop some Hail Mary torpedoes in that general direction and then get the heck out of here. Because I only have one heal left. And this is with <laughs> this is with a um, with a survivalist build. And I'm not, of course I'm being HE spam. Although to be honest, uh, AP spam would probably be the better choice here. Uh, it, it, it may be that uh, before the two minutes remaining on the battle timer are running out, I might actually be able to get my turrets around. 
But I've gone undetected now, concealment build for the win. And yeah, the Izumo isn't stupid to push into a cruiser uh, that may or may not have torpedoes. So uh, we are going to get, uh, we're going to get a double salvo at an Izumo out. And then I'm going to try and go undetected again. So uh, shots out and uh, yeah, that's disappointing to say the least. But uh, I, I'm going to curve away, get undetected. And for these sort of situations, you can use the, you can use the, um, you can use the salvo fire pretty well. Uh, the Petropavlovsk has just gone down to the Colbert and I am going to use my last scout plane and try to do something about that Musashi over there. And I don't really have any hopes that uh, there is anything that I can really do about this thing. Um, I mean, that wasn't terrible, but um, it was about as much damage as I would do to a Colbert who was fully broadsiding at this point. So. Uh, Musashi is slowing down, so torpedoes are... that was a good one, but uh, yeah, Musashi's looked at me a little bit and um, they, um, the, sh the, crew <laughs> the ship I'm sailing immediately um, decided to sink out of embarrassment, so uh, we're gonna get another double salvo out at the Musashi. And then, uh, because we've lost at this point, there's there's nothing we can do. One of our battleships has abandoned us and is heading for the enemy cap, which uh, at this point is Locked completely... Well, completely not helpful because we're never going to cup. But uh, there's a Hindenburg. Hindenburg's just going to kill me. I'm out of heals, so um, I might just get. I might get another double salvo away, but I have to. I actually have to kite away because otherwise the Hindenburg's going to kill me. So unfortunately, I'm only getting the rear turret, uh, the rear turret out, and uh, to do a little bit more damage against that Hindenburg before he inevitably kills me. Hail Mary torpedoes out. Uh, Isomo, a friendly Isomo is dead, and uh, I'm going to be dead by. The by the Hindenburg, there we go. Uh, he has relieved me of this misery, and I don't think we're gonna get the torpedoes on target anymore because the battle's about over. And if it wasn't the timer, then it would have the lack of score because the enemy team had already 996 points at this stage. Yeah, this is about what you can expect uh, to do in in the Andalusia. Um, you're, yeah. <laughs> I'll look. I'm, I'm trying, right? I'm trying to find something positive. And uh, my commiserations to the friendly Grosse Kur first. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, Terry, I hear you say. Uh, what if you put the historical camo on and premium consumables and a 12-point commander with APCS? Surely 234mm main guns with armor piercing can, do ma can make something happen with APCS, right? Well, of course we are in a 10 game. We are facing Haku, Blackyama, Schlieffen, Wooster and Yugumo. So it's a 5v5 domination on deadlock. And uh, it's a carrier battle. <laughs> so let's see how that goes. Uh, at least uh, when it comes to the light cruisers. I mean, I, I managed to score a Citadel on a Colbert. Can't be that hard now, can it? Let's see. Uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, Freddy bot with us. And I'm head over to A cup, uh, literally because I don't want to be in B, because being in B means that I'm going to be crossfired. And as you've seen in the last battle, if a high tier battleship only just uh, as much as just looks at you funny, um, yeah, you're very quickly losing two thirds of your hit points. So, <laughs> uh, yes, you might look like a battle cruiser. <laughs> Or you might, might pretend to be a battle cruiser, but it very much isn't. <laughs> it's, it's not a ship that you want to be shot at in. Uh, there comes there come all the airstrikes, and um, well, it's a bot, so I'm not going to try. I'm not going to even try and support it. But I am going to, um, for whatever little good it does, I am going to put uh, pop the uh, defensive AA and see if I can maybe shoot a plane down or so with a long range AA. But I now do have a Wooster to shoot at at eight, eight kilometer range. Hello, Mr. Wooster. Uh, shots out. Uh, there is a destroyer over in B, and uh, with the APCS, actually, I did a little bit of damage. Uh, let's get a double salvo out. Oh, the booster's turning away. That's a shame. So now I have to wait 20 odd seconds for that to come back in again. But uh, look, we, we, we got six shells on target out of how many did we fire? 18? Oh, wait, to be fair, the booster was turning away, but. Yeah, uh, there's Yugumo out there, so I've got the I've got the sonar running. We have the capture circle. Where there's only Wooster here, so let's see let let's see if we can make uh, if we can do something with our newfound uh, super cruiser status and uh, do, uh, get some get ourselves a Wooster killed. I'm still on full hit points, and we're two minutes into a battle. That's a good sign. 
Hmm, Yugomo. Okay, uh, let's get... Okay, uh, that warrants a... Can we save our Freddy? Double salvo out, Yugomo slightly turns away, shots all fly over. And now we have to wait another 20 seconds for the guns to reload. Woohoo! <laughs> and uh, I don't know if the Freddy has died, but... Uh, well, he hasn't. <laughs> Uh, there goes our first heal, and we are trying to... Well, we're still trying to kill the booster. So uh, let's see if we can make something happen now. Double salvo out, fully broadsiding booster, forward turrets, go, go. Uh, 7.6 kilometer range, nope. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Uh, yeah, if that booster had been firing... Up, look at that, semi pens. <laughs> For, with APCS at 8 kilometers against the Worcester. Uh, if um, if that Worcester had been firing armor piercing at me, I'd probably, have been, I'd probably be mostly dead at this point. Uh, the carrier goes for the Worcester, which is generally not a wise choice, because that's a Worcester. And um, I am still struggling to do any semblance of damage to that ship. I should probably fire high explosive at broadside and light cruisers then. Might, I might be better off here. The... I'm going to show, come and go and chase after it. And again, fully broadsiding light cruiser, APCS build, captain, 234 millimeter armor piercing, eight kilometer range, semi pens. <laughs> Maybe I have to manually aim at the deck plating. Uh, that might be a thing that I need to do. But uh, fortunately, none of the actual battleships has been shooting at me, so I'm only down to one third of my hit points purely by the Worcester shooting at me. <laughs> okay, uh, we are we are doing a little bit of damage, however. And I've got uh, I've got another heal coming off, uh, except for the shells that are completely bouncing off the Worcester here, of course. But uh, got another heal coming off, so uh, we might be able to duke it out after all with that light cruiser <laughs> that is sitting fully broadsiding on. Uh, I am undetected now, but I'm not sure how long that's going to last. Now I'm detected again. Uh, dispersion can be good if it wants to be. Uh, but it can also be very trollish, as you've just seen, because we get, we managed the full penetrations when we hit the superstructure on the booster. Uh, let's see if we can finish him off, though. So, one more salvo out, and uh, once again I managed to get myself undetected, which, if I was able to do a little bit more than 450 points of damage with a single salvo every 12 seconds, that would actually be a good thing. I'm detect I'm air spotted here, so uh, salvo fire out. Let's see, fully broadsiding Worcester, 10 kilometers. Can we get him? Maybe we can get him. Come on, go go armor piercing, APCS plus. Nope. <laughs> Enemy incoming. And uh, Enemy the the carrier has now. Well, look, right? It's a new ship. I'm used to people focusing on the new ships. This isn't the problem here. No one's been focusing. The carrier has left me alone until he ran out of other things to sink. For goodness sake, uh, I'm going my last heal here, and uh, the Worcester's getting away from with this. There comes the carrier, I've got the uh, defensive AA up, this isn't going to make a, a lick of a difference, because there comes the Japanese airstrike. Uh, there's Schlieffen as well, let's get some shots out at Schlieffen, but there's no way I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be dodging those, uh, those torpedo drops. So there goes my health. And uh, uh, it's also, ah oh, yeah, it's fine, Yamato's already taken me out and uh, relieved me from my misery. So if you thought the Drake was bad, uh, I, I have a bridge to sell to you. <laughs> because this thing, this thing is a whole new definition of bad. Like, honestly, <laughs> this, uh, this has been absolutely dreadful but let's not end the let's not end the battle on on a dour uh, or the review on a dour note let's uh, end it on a positive note um, what can what we, what can we improve because this is a new line right it's coming out and uh, while it probably has gone through super testing uh, I, I'm not sure what the tier 10 is gonna look like I don't know um, I don't know what the uh, uh, I don't I don't know what tier 8 is gonna look like but um, what you could do with this ship. Well, first of all, if you're giving it the Drake's guns, give it, give it the Drake's high explosive. At least I can HE spam. Uh, because a 12 second reload with a uh, with 12 second base reload with a uh, with a salvo fire option with something like the Drake's guns with a very with a good fire chance would actually make sense and would actually be a, a way to deal damage. Um, give it better torpedoes. 
these are not these are not better than tier seven. Give give it give it give it more alpha damage on the torpedoes. I don't need to in ten kilometer range, but give it more alpha damage on the torpedoes. Um, uh, give it uh, I don't know. Give it a little bit more hit points maybe, uh, because the armor is so bad on these ships and this uh, that uh, you know tier ten battleships just eat them for breakfast. Um, yeah. Uh, I think the the concept of a poorly maneuverable uh, poorly maneuverable AP spammer at long range give it better turret traverse please seven and a half degrees per second is atrocious or or give it a precise aim for all I care um, take give it better AA please <laughs> you, you can't slap def AA onto a ship that has tier seven AA in in tier ten in tier nine and gets into tier ten games it, it's it's useless. Um, give me a precise aim instead of the uh, give me a precise aim one instead of the def AA and I'd be happier already. So there are there are ways to fix the ship I believe and uh, given that for example the British heavy cruiser line has been patched and has been drawn forward over the over time. Uh, depending on what tier 10 looks like, uh, this can either turn out to be um, an ismo situation where we have the okay you just have to go through the absolute hellstorm that is tier 9 in order to get something really good at tier 10 or this can be a dutch cruiser situation where you're going like you know what until tier 8 was pretty good but after that it's not worth it anymore so uh, time will tell and once we'll see the tier 10 we'll know what goes but um, uh, right now i would say the tier 7 was uh, was a pleasure to play uh, the tier 9 uh, the polar opposite and that's it for me today thanks everybody and apologies if i've been too negative about it but I, I, I'll leave you with one little anecdote. Um, I was so frustrated after testing this ship that I found a bug, because I tried playing the, um, I tried playing, I forgot what it's called, the the tier one ship, with uh, <laughs> with a paid camo and an APCS captain, just to cleanse my palate because I was that pissed about this tier nine thing. Uh, and then I found out that while that thing can is supposed to be able to fire AP, uh, you can't actually select it. So that's been reported and that will be fixed in probably one of the next patches, hopefully. So uh, you can go back to tier one if you had to ever play the tier nine of this line and go there. Anyway, that's it for me today now for finals. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Bye bye.